students, welcome to the um, geometry homework help video, uh, page 56, numbers 11 through 14, numbers 16 through 29. And let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first of all, numbers 11 through 14, they're simply asking you this question, is M the midpoint of AB? Is M the midpoint of AB? Okay, I'm going to cut and paste that so I don't have to keep typing that every time. Okay, there. Now, this is for 11, 12, 13, and 14. Well, first of all, if M is truly the midpoint of AB, first of all, M has to lie on segment AB. And it doesn't. I mean, M's way over here. Here's AB. Look, here's segment AB right here. Do you see that? M's way over here somewhere. Students, listen to me. The only way that M is the midpoint of AB is if M is in the middle of AB. And M is not in the middle of AB. If M was the midpoint, it would have to be right here in the middle of AB. And this segment here would have to be congruent to this segment here. Then M would be the midpoint. But the way this is drawn on this diagram right here, is M the midpoint of AB? In other words, is M in the middle of AB? No, of course not, not at all. All right, number 12. Is M, same question, is M the midpoint of AB? Well, the question really is, is M in the middle of AB? Well, yes it is. First of all, M lies on AB. Here's segment AB, and M lies on that segment. Number two, it's right in the middle. How do I know that? Because there's a tick mark here, and a tick mark here, and that means this segment is congruent to this segment. So yes, M is right in the middle of AB, so the answer to number 12 is yes. All right, number 13. Now the answer to this is no, all right? And it's the same question again. Um, is M the midpoint of AB? Well, Mr. Earhart, it's right in the middle, and this segment's congruent to this one. I know that, but remember, if M is truly in the middle of AB, by definition, that means M has to lie on segment AB. So this is segment AB right here. Remember, segment AB is a segment that connects A and B. Okay? This is not segment AB. This is segment AM, and this is segment MB. But we do not have segment AB. Segment AB a, would be this right here. And then M would have to be right in the middle right there. All right? And that's not what we have. Notice we have two segments, segment AM, segment MB. And yes, I know that this segment here is congruent to this segment here. That's fine. But also, for M to be the midpoint of AB, M has to lie on AB. And there isn't even an AB anywhere. AB is this line up here, and we don't even have that drawn. So no, M is not the midpoint. Okay, how about this one? Well, it looks good. If you'll look in your book, it looks really solid. Here's AB, it's one segment, that's good. M lies on AB, that's good. And doesn't it look like M's in the middle? Yes, but do we know for sure? Like in other words, do they have an eight written here and an eight written here? So we know that this segment grew into this segment. No, there's not. Do we have a tick mark here and a tick mark? No, we don't. So we don't know for sure, so you cannot state for sure that M is the midpoint. So the answer is no. If you don't know for sure, you cannot state that. All right, that's numbers 11 through 14. Let's continue on now to number 16 through, I believe, 16 through 29. Okay, here we go. Notice the entire length of KL all the way across is 38. And what they're asking you to do in number 16 is find the measurement of KM and find the measurement of ML. Now notice they have congruent marks right here. Here's one and here's one. In your book you'll see those. That means this segment here is congruent to this segment here. Well if that's the case then we know this has to be 19 and this has to be 19 because you simply take 38 which is the length of the whole segment and divide it by 2 and you will get 19. So this segment is 19 and this segment is 19 because M, if you'll look right here, M is the midpoint of this segment, and I know that because of this and this here. All right, number 17, exact same thing. If the whole segment is 82 all the way across, they want us to find the length of this little segment here and this little segment here. Would you please notice in your book they're congruent? There's one little tick mark here and one tick mark here. That means these two segments are congruent, so you take 82 and divide it in half, 
and you will get 41 and 41 for each measurement. All right, number 18, still the same thing. You might get a decimal answer out or a fraction, but it's still the same thing. The entire length of this whole segment is 17 all the way across, and they want us to find the length of this segment and the length of this segment. Notice in your books you have a little red mark here and a red mark here. That means these two segments are congruent. They're the same length, so you take 17 and you divide that by 2. You cut it in half and you will get 8.5 or 8.5, whatever you want to put, 8.5 or 8.5. And, and that's the measurement of each one of those lengths. Uh, again, same thing with 19. If you've got a calculator and you just type it in, it's really, really easy. The whole length of this segment is 2.7. That's the whole length. They're asking you to find the measurement of this segment and then the measurement of this segment. Notice there's a red tick mark here and one here, so we know these two these two segments have the same length, so I take the total, which is 2.7, and I divide it by 2, and I do get 1.35 and 1.35 for each segment, and when you add those two together, you do get 2.7. All right, moving on to number 20. Again, students, kind of the same thing. Um, here, instead of having a midpoint, we have a segment by, excuse me, a segment bisector, okay? In other words, this segment right here is cutting AB right in half. How do you know that, Mr. Earhart? Because look, I've got a red tick mark here and a red tick mark here, and this is point C right here. So that means AC has one tick mark, CB has one tick mark, so I know then these two segments are congruent. So they want you to find CB and then the whole length, AB. Well, look, if AC is 36, then we know that CB also has to be 36. And then they want us to find the length from A all the way down to B, the entire length. That's going to be 36 plus 36. So the, an the length of CB is 36, and the length of AB would be 72. Pretty simple. All right, number 21. Exact same thing again. This segment right here is bisecting MN. It's cutting it right in half. How do I know? Because I have a red tick mark here and a red tick mark here. And that, of course, means that this segment here is congruent to this segment here. Well, I know that this segment here, PN, is 15, so I know MP must also be 15. And then if this, is, if this segment here is 15 and this segment here is 15, add those two together and we know the whole segment is 30. So segment MP is 15 and segment MN, the entire length, would be 30. All right, 30. Okay, moving on to 22. Again, we have the exact same thing. We have this line right here cutting DE right in half. It's cutting DE right in half, and I know that because I've got a red tick mark right here and one here. So if DF is 29.5, then FE is also 29.5, okay? So I just found the length of FE right here. 29.5. Now they want me to find the length of DE. Now that's the whole length across, so that's going to be 29.5 times 2, because there's two of them. So 0 carrier 1, 9 carrier 1, 59. So DE has a length of 59. That's the whole segment, DE, all the way across. Okay, moving on to number 23, exact same thing again. This line right here is bisecting segment ST. I know that because I've got a tick mark here and a tick mark here. So if SU is 3.6, then UT also has to be 3.6. So I found the measurement of UT. UT is 3.6. And now I've got to find the measurement of ST all the way across. Well, it looks like, to me, it looks like 3.6 plus 3.6. Or you could just say 3.6 times 2, 2 carrier 1, 7.2. So the length of ST, the entire segment all the way across, is 7.2. All right, let's continue on now to number 24. Now, if you'll look in your books, the directions for 24 and 25 say the Minuteman Bikeway is a 10.5 mile bike path that runs from Arlington to Bedford, Massachusetts. I've been to Bedford, Massachusetts. I've been all around. I've been to Arlington. I've been all through Massachusetts. 
really pretty state to visit during the summer. Boston is a really cool place to visit if you ever get the chance. Caitlin and Lori begin at opposite ends of the bikeway and meet at the halfway point. How far does each bike rider travel? Now, let's go ahead and very quickly here get a picture of this bike path. So here it is. And it looks like to me it goes from here over to here and the whole the whole total all the way across is 10.5 and 10.5. Now this bike rider starts and she's going across. Here's the midpoint about right here. And this bike rider starts and it says they meet right in the middle. Do you see that? So one bike rider went from, we'll say Caitlin went from here to here and Lori went from here to here. So if the whole length is 10.5 and I want to know half of that, would I just simply not take 10.5 and divide it by 2? And you're welcome to use a calculator. You would get 5.25. So this segment here is 5.25 miles, as is this segment over here. 5.25 miles. If you, if you add those two numbers together, you will get 10.5. So the question is, is how far does each bike rider travel? Well, there it is right there. I mean, 5.25 miles. Each one travel 2 point or 5.25 miles. Let's take a look now at number 25. Okay. Um, Number 25, Caitlin starts on the path 4.3 miles from the Arlington end, and Lori starts on the path 3 miles from the Bedford end. How far will each rider bike before reaching the halfway point on the path? Now I'm going to go ahead and cut and paste what we had before. All right, there we go. Now, we saw before, students, now think about this. Um, we're going to say, let's see, let me look at the Caitlin. We're going to say Caitlin is right here. Put C for Caitlin and Lori's over here. Now we already saw that if they each travel half the distance it's 5.25 miles. Now think about this. Caitlin's going to start on the path 4.3 miles in. So she's going to start pretty far in. I mean this whole thing is only 5.25. She's going to start all the way in right here at 4.3. So now come on think about this for a second guys. If this whole length right here is 5.25 and she's starting here she only has to travel this far to get to the midpoint. I mean, it says in the problem, it says she's starting right here. Now, how does she start there? I don't know. Maybe a helicopter drop, drop. Maybe she parachuted in. I don't know. But the problem says she starts right here at the 4.3 mark, and she travels to the midway point. So how would you find that little distance, that little black distance right there? Well, think about it. The whole distance is 5.25, and you would subtract out 4.3. Let's see what you're left over with. 5.95. So this little black line right here is 0.95. And that makes sense, guys. We know from here to here is 4.3. So if you take 4.3 plus 0.95, you will get 5.25. Now let's take a look at Laura. Laura, Laura traveled a little further. She started on the path three miles in. So she started... Uh, let's see, probably about right here. Uh, let's see, what's 2.6? Probably start about right there. That's the three mile mark, okay? So this is where she started. So she only had to travel from here to here. That's all she had to travel. So we know this whole segment is 5.25. And we know she skipped three miles of it because she started here. So how do I find out how much she traveled? Well, the exact same thing. 5.25 minus 3. And of course, if you want to put 0, 0.00, you can do that. So subtract, and you'll get 2.25. So Caitlin traveled 0.95 miles, less than one mile, and she, and she arrived at the midpoint here. Lori traveled 2.25 miles, and she arrived at the midpoint here. I hope that makes sense. That's how you would do numbers 24 and 25. Okay, on to numbers 26, 27, 28, and 29. We're going to throw some algebra in. Now look, students, in numbers, uh, in these numbers, they want us to find the variable, the value of the variable. Now, 
I know the answer is right here. I don't care about that. You could look it up in the back of the book if it's an odd number. Here's what I want you to see. AM has a slash. MB has a slash. That means this length here, 6P, is equal or congruent to this length here, 72. So I can simply say 6P equals what? 72. Now divide both sides by 6, and P equals 12. Pretty simple, not too hard. All right, number 27, same thing. Notice how this segment here is congruent to this segment here. I know that because of this slash and this slash. So I can say that 19 equals Q plus 7. And now to solve this, I'm going to bring the 7 over. And when I bring the 7 over, I make it become a negative 7. So it's now gone. And I'm left with 8 equals Q. Alright, and let's see. I apologize to you guys. I copied that problem wrong, didn't I? I hate that when I make a mistake like that. Um, let's see here. No, I did not copy it wrong. So when I put in, I just subtracted wrong. So 19 minus 7 would be 12, and bring down your Q, Q equals 12. I apologize for that mistake. So there we go. Uh, the answer is 12. Alright, moving on to number 28. Same thing. This segment here is congruent to this segment here. Well, this segment has a length of r minus 3. This segment has a length of 15. So I can say r minus s, or r minus 3, excuse me, equals 15. Now I bring this negative 3 over, and when I bring that negative 3 over, I make it a positive 3. So now this negative 3 is gone, and I'm left with r equals 18. r equals 18. All right, moving on to number 29. This segment here is congruent to this segment here. They're congruent. So this length is 4, and this length is 2s plus 6. So 4 equals 2s plus 6. Now let's solve for s. I'm going to bring this 6 over. When I do, it becomes a negative 6. So now the positive 6 is gone. I have a negative 6 here. So I'm left with negative 2 equals 2s. And of course, the negative 2 came from 4, negative 6. Now I'm going to divide one side by 2, divide the other side by 2. These cancel. I'm left with s on the right side, and negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. So there's the answer to that. I hope this has been helpful. Um, please continue to work hard on your homework, and contact me if you have any questions.